right, so Thor. Um, I have two major complaints about this film. One, here we have the character that is on the same power level as Superman. And, like, he is power-wise the Superman of the Avengers squad, or the Avengers team. But the thing is, he's his own movie, his solo movie, he's got a scene at the beginning where we see him demonstrate that power, which is very, very cool. Then he's got a scene toward the climax where we see him demonstrate that power against the Destroyer armor. And that's okay. I mean, it's ridiculously short when he's actually fighting it. It's, you know, whooping, and then it's over. And then he gets a fight with Loki, who we're told is not or who we know is not, like, incredibly strong. So it's not that, like, the last two fights, not that impressive. I mean, we know that the armor's really powerful, but he just dominates it so much that we don't really understand the full scope of its power because we don't have anything to scale how powerful his friends are. Like, the armor's fighting his friends, and it dominates them. It, they, they get one shot in at it, and it's just over in two seconds for them they get completely tossed aside and like that would be impressive if we had something to scale how powerful they were but in the only other scene where we see them do anything besides bicker they're not shown to be very good fighters they're shown to be okay but the frost giant scene they're they take out like four or five each whereas thor is sitting there taking out 20 of them so, like, we're not really meant to believe that they're very powerful. Like, that's, that brings me to two other things. The Asgardians are not shown besides Thor and Odin and Loki. And Loki, not even in this film, but besides Thor and Odin, to be very powerful at all. Loki slightly, but not particularly. They're just shown to be, you know, like, tougher humans. They just are able to take bigger hits, but none of them have any kind of power set like Thor has. And that bugs me. Which brings me to my second thing about Loki. There's such a big character shift from this character at the very, you know, peak of the climax. Because he's frozen the bridge and he's got this genius plan that, like, I didn't see coming the first time I saw this. And I'm really good at usually predicting the villain's plot. So he's got this genius plan and suddenly... And he's got it all set up to where he's about to destroy Jodenheim. I think I said that right. He's about to destroy the Frost Giants, and he tells Thor that he wants him to fight him. It was so... It was out of nowhere, and it, it's completely against character, because Loki is not a fighter. We can tell that from his other scenes in the movie. But we can just tell it in general about the character for those of us that know anything about him. He's a crafty person. He's a thinker, not a fighter. And, like, why he would challenge Thor to a fight makes no sense. I mean, I guess you could argue that he was just really mad and he really wanted to prove and he's, he's the better of his brother. He's his brother's better in every way, but I don't think he's... I mean, he's got an ego. I don't think his ego extends in that form. So that really bugged me because it was it was just a really useless character shift so that we get a fight scene and so that his plot could be foiled. Thor should have come up with some way Thor should have either just fought him on his own accord, which he said he wasn't doing like that would have been fine if Thor just came in and fought Loki, like he didn't give him a chance to say, you know, I'm not going to fight you. That would have been perfect if Thor just showed up and he fought him instead of saying I'm not going to fight you and then having Loki want to fight him it was dumb. It was, it was argument for the sake of argument and fighting for the sake of fighting. There was, there was a better way to do that scene. Um, but on the plus side, beautiful visualizations in this. Anthony Hopkins, fantastic. Like, I could not think of anyone else to play Odin besides Anthony Hopkins. Guy that plays Loki, and God, I can't think of his name right now. Awesome actor. I really think he's a great choice. He's he does a great job. Like he's very, very emotionally charged in this film. Like the my favorite scene is the scene between him and Odin in the armory. Just perfect. I mean, like the his whole world just broke down. And he just 
he bears his soul right there, and it was, it was great. Um, Chris Hemsworth, really great out of nowhere pick uh, as far as actors go. He's, you know, a very low, low lying kind of guy. No one ever really heard of him, and he just came on and he did a great job. He was really good um, at the emotional scenes. He was had a great style of humor. He played it just completely straight. He didn't like. He didn't add that, like, oh, I'm playing the stupid guy, but I know I'm playing the stupid guy. He played it just dead straight, and it was perfect um, with some of his stuff. And I, I really enjoyed that. The comedic scenes with him and and the uh, the emotional scenes were good, too. I didn't care for some of, the, like, his his action, to be honest with you. Like, the way he, he acts when he's, you know, physically fighting people. Just, it was all right. It just didn't do anything for me. Um... So yeah, I think that's Thor, uh, Stanley, great cameo by Stanley, and, uh, here comes the, the outro scene, which is, the problem with these outro scenes, these easter eggs, is they kind of dropped some of them, and that became a problem, because then they had to start coming up with how they're gonna explain them, so hold on, I'm gonna watch it while, while I'm talking here. Yeah, so it's the doctor who's an astronomer or some kind of physicist has nothing to do with the Tesseract from Captain America. With that, there's no reason why they call him. He's brought in to do with this thing, you know. Nick Fury, that is. Yeah, so, Loki shows up there, and that's, eh. I don't know, I just don't really care for that scene, but I will say this. Captain America and Thor seem to mesh together better than any of the other ones. Um, just as, on the whole, it seems to work together really well, and that's good, because they came out on the same, er, at the same time. Um, these are the only two that felt like they were really building toward Avengers in, in some ways. Captain America more so, because... It introduced the object that they were looking for throughout the whole film, and Thor, because it's the origin of the object, and it introduces one of the major characters related to the object later. Um, but uh, the other ones really do, like Iron Man and uh, and Hulk, from what I remember, really don't seem to build toward it. Uh, Iron Man 2, in other ways, builds toward it, but it doesn't mesh with the other films, as well as Thor and Captain America mesh together. So, yeah, that's, that's uh, Thor. I'll be back with Hulk.